In this video, we're going to have a look at solving quadratic equations. Essentially, there's like a framework in how to solve a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is an equation where the highest power is a squared power. And to, in order to solve a quadratic equation, we need to ensure a few things. The first thing we need to ensure is that our equation is equal to zero. After that, we need to make sure our equation is factorised. It might be factorised already, or we might have to factorise it. Then from there, we would split our individual equations and we would solve them and they would both be equal to zero. Okay, so that's like a general framework on how we solve quadratic equations. Let's have a look at part A. X bracket X minus seven is equal to zero. Well, that's handy, it's already equal to zero. So I've got some quantity multiplied by seven less than that quantity and I know that when I multiply those two things together, I get zero. So this is already factorised. It's the written as something multiplied by something. So I've already got that first step. I'm then going to split my two expressions. So I'm going to say that, okay, either this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. So this is why I refer to as the split stage. And if we can solve either of these equations, we solve them. So I can add 7 to both sides here, and I would get x equals 7. So there are two values of x that I can put into this that makes the answer 0. For example, if I put 0 into this in place of x, I'm going to get 0 multiplied by negative 7, which is 0. If we were to put in 7 into our equation, well, that's going to be 7 multiplied by 0, which is 0. Any other value of x, it's not going to equal 0. Let's say if x was 10, this would become 10 times 3, which is 30. It's not equal to 0. So when we solve quadratic equations, we find the values that... We, we find the values of x that make the equation equal to 0, which will be really useful later on when we're looking at sketching quadratics, because these are actually going to tell us the roots of an equation. We've got quite a few examples to have a look at here. So... To solve a quadratic, it must be equal to zero. We factorise, we split, we solve. It's already equal to zero, and it's already factorised. So I'm going to split my two expressions here. I'm going to say, okay, x minus two is equal to zero, or x plus 11 equals zero. So I've split them, and now I'm going to solve them if I can. I'm going to add two to both sides. I'm going to subtract 11 from both sides. And that's us. If x is 2, this would be 0, and then I'm doing 0 times 13, which is 0. If x was minus 11, this would be 0, so I'd be doing minus 13 times 0, which is 0. Okay, so example 3. All right, this looks a bit different. So to solve a quadratic, it must be equal to 0, which it is. We then need to factorise, split, and solve. Let's have a look. What's step one of factorising again? Ah, yes, is there a common factor? So if we have a look here, there is a common factor of 4x. And then we can say 4x times what is 8x squared? Well, that's 2x. 4x times what is negative 20x? Well, that's negative 5. So I've now factorised it. Once I've factorised it, I can split and solve. So I'm going to say that 4x is equal to 0, or 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. So we've factorised, we've split, and now we'll solve, because we want to work out x. So dividing through by 4 is going to give me 0. This example over here, I'll add 5 to both sides, and I'll divide through it by 2. That's going to be x is equal to 5 over 2. So there are two values that make that we can substitute into this equation that will give us uh, that will return as an answer of zero part d okay if we want to solve this quadratic it's not factorized we don't have brackets in place here um, it is equal to zero though so that's good so to solve a quadratic we factorize we split we solve we want to factorize this here so step one of factorizing is there a common factor no do I have something squared take away something squared? Yes, I do. We can write this as a difference of squares because 16 is 4 squared. So this can be expressed as t plus 4 and t minus 4. So we factorise. We can then go ahead 
and split and solve. We're going to say t plus 4 equals 0, t minus 4 equals 0. Then we can go ahead and solve both of those. Subtracting 4 from both sides, t equals minus 4. Adding 4 to both sides, we're going to get t equals 4. Okay, we've got two final examples. Part E. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to change this slightly. I'm going to change this to a 9. I'm going to change this to a 1. Okay, so imagine we were given this question. We were asked to solve it. To solve a quadratic, it must be equal to 0. We factorise or split, we solve. So we can hopefully see here that this does not equal 0. So before I proceed with doing anything, I need to make it equal to 0. So I would need to subtract 1 from both sides x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Okay, so now I can proceed. So we've got equal to 0, we then need to factorise, split and solve. So factorising, there's no common factor, I've got no difference of squares, it's going to be one of these trinomials. I'm going to have x and an x. The signs are going to be the same, but here it's telling us they're both going to be negative. And I'm thinking of factors of 8. Well, I've got 1 and 8 are 2 and 3. 2 and 4. I'm going to choose 2 and 4 because they make 6. So I've factorised. I'm going to split. I'm going to have x minus 2 equals 0. x minus 4 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. Add 4 to both sides. And that's it. Okay, so that question was a wee bit different because we had to... Um, make sure it was equal to zero first. Okay, last example. We've got 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 equals zero. Okay, so it's equal to zero, so we're happy. So what we need to do is we need to factorise, split and solve. So this is a tricky one to factorise because it's a non-unitary quadratic. There's no difference of squares or common factor here. So we're going to have a 3x and an x. And we need to think about, okay, factors of 8. So we're having a look at this here. So I'm going to have um, different signs. I'm going to have 1 plus and 1 minus. So we're thinking about factors of 8. So it's probably going to be 4 and 2. So we're going to have to have a plus 4 here and a minus 2 here. I do that because, see, when I do this bit, that's going to give me 12x. And that bit's going to give me minus 2x, which is going to make that plus 10x. So we'll factorise, we'll split. And we will go ahead and solve. 3x minus 2 equals 0. x plus 4 equals 0. So we'll add 2 to both sides here. Sometimes you need to do a bit more work. Divide both sides by 3. And here we'll subtract 4 from both sides. So what we're doing is we are finding the values that make our equation equal to 0. If we just zoom in on this example here just for a wee second. I can actually draw this parabola and this parabola tells me, so it tells me that when x is 2, the outcome of when x is 2 I get an answer of 0. So I could represent that as the point 2, 0. Similarly, I could represent the point 4 as 4, 0 because when x is 4, my answer is 0. And then this would eventually, when we look at this, allow us to graph a parabola where our answer to the solving of the quadratic equation gives us the roots of that quadratic equation. But you'll see that in a later video. Hopefully that was helpful. Went through quite a lot there. But generally, just remember, make it equal to zero, factorise, split, solve. Thank you very much.